for someone else. I think Lincoln Riley and Southern Cal will be the next one to join the party for at least competing and being in the discussion into November, not this year, into yeah. November for national Yo, championships, Tom. Well, it's good. It's going to be interesting. I think I might've said this to you a week or two weeks ago. I find it in inter- uh, I find it very fascinating that yes, while this is a money grab and it is, we're talking about a $30 million payout versus a minimum of what's going to be likely a $70 million payout to SC and UCLA. The trade-off is, It is much easier to travel from the East Coast to the West Coast to play a football game. It's an entirely different animal to travel from the West Coast to the East Coast, do noon kickoffs, and then, oh, by the way, what happens when you have to line up and play Wisconsin in late November on the road in your UCLA? Or you have to play at Penn State in November and it's 25 degrees. That part of things for SC and UCLA I think is going to be a little bit of a wake-up call. And like I said to you, I do remember saying this to you last week, they went from a non-line of scrimmage league to a line of scrimmage league now. And I think that's going to be a bigger adjustment than people think. Agree. Tom Luganville on the Corona Premier Guest Line. I'm looking at Bama's and Georgia's schedule. And it looks like a pretty much a cakewalk to me. Uh, if I had to mm-hmm. bet today... Um, if I had to, you know, lay a bet down, I would say they're both twelve and zero when they when they go to Atlanta. How do you see it? Yeah, I think barring an injury, when you look at their roster profile and you look at what they've got coming back, you know, it, could you lose focus and have a lapse and lose a close game? Sure, um, but again, and I've said this to you going back years, if you're going to have a chance to beat those two teams they're going to have to do something to help you. They're going to have to screw it up because you're not just going to do it mano y mano. They got better players across the board than everybody else. So to me, it, it kind of comes down to what do they do? Do they put themselves in a position to where they are at risk of a loss because of their own lack of focus or an injury or you know, they have one of those uncharacteristic days where they, you know, they, they, they give up you know, two big touchdowns on third and seven, or they give up a punt return for, you know, a touchdown, and all of a sudden the game's close in the fourth quarter. And, oh, by the way, particularly with Alabama, but I think Georgia's going to be kind of in this conversation too, is you better be prepared to score a minimum of, you know, 35 to 40 points on both of those teams in order to be involved in the game in the fourth quarter, and how are you supposed to do that against them defensively? All right, let me ask you this. It's going to be tough. With Ohio State returning C.J. Stroud and hiring an unbelievable defensive coordinator in Jim Knowles from OK State, uh, do they have enough juice if they face off against one of those teams because they have upgraded to that level on the defensive side of the football and you would have to believe that Knowles will give them a major boost in red zone efficiency numbers, Tom? Well, they, number one, yes, they absolutely do. And number two, that defense last year might have been the youngest compiled group of 11 starters. I would actually argue going into the top 22 that Ohio State has played with going back 15 to 20 years. And everybody's back that is of consequence. So they are going to be more experienced. They're already talented. They're going to be older. And then to your point, they're going to have a coordinator coming in there that flat out knows what he's doing and is going to be dealing with much better players than the players they had at Oklahoma State. And we saw what Oklahoma State was able to do on defense, particularly when it came to sacks and when it came to points allowed. I mean, Oklahoma State was shutting people down last yeah, year. They now were. I think with Ohio State, yeah, Ohio State's personnel, there's no, there, there's no question given that offense, um, this might be one of the best, most talented teams Ryan Day has had. They're going to boat race Michigan after Harbaugh messed around and lost his coordinators.